In today's tutorial, you will learn how to do a write-on effect very simply in After Effects. This doesn't mean that it's better than any other write-on tutorial out there. The reason is because years ago when I started this YouTube channel, I did a write-on effect and it was super basic. It was using struct effect and the quality wasn't so great. So I wanted to do better write-on tutorial. I have my text layer here. The font that I'm using is Fillmore Type LaSalle and I downloaded that from Adobe Fonts. So if you go to fonts.adobe.com, all of these fonts will be free for you if you have Creative Cloud subscription. Now I'm going to type in Fillmore Type LaSalle and then basically all you need to do is to click on this button. I already clicked it, but once you click on that button, the font will be activated and you just need to wait a couple of seconds or minutes, depending on your computer and internet, for the font to be activated in your After Effects. Better yet, restart your After Effects and open it again. Once you do that, we will create a shape layer over this text layer. I want you to click away, so make sure you don't click on any of this layer. Go to your pen tool and then start drawing over your text. Once I start drawing over the text, it creates a shape layer. So if you start drawing when you are still clicking on your text layer, it will create a mask on the text layer and you don't want that. So make sure you click away first before creating a shape layer. Another thing that I want to remind is you have fill and stroke here. Make sure that your fill is set to none. And in order to do that, you just have to click on fill and then select this icon over here and then hit OK. Before we continue, have you ever wanted to save time on motion graphics? Motion Deck Extension has thousands of animated templates that you can add to your animation. You can download a bundle pack, buy an individual pack, or subscribe if you don't want to spend too much in one go. They also have a free pack if you want to test them out first. It's so easy to use. The cool thing is you can customize them all. Check out the link in the description below to download. Now, back to the tutorial. So let's continue on drawing these letters here. And basically, you want to make sure that this red strokes is covering your text as much as you can. And also, I want this right on to be continuous. So I'm going to continue from this N vertex of the W to the R. Same with the I. And then for the T, I'm going to leave that straight line by itself because I want to animate it separately. And yeah, just focus on these letters first. I'm going to name the shape layer as matte and I'm going to turn down the opacity, hit T and then turn down the opacity to 70 just so that we can see the text layer behind it. Now, as you can see, some of the white text are still uncovered. So we want to make sure that they all covered by this red stroke. I'm going to click on these vertices and I'm just going to adjust the handle by just dragging it out and make sure that they're covered. And sometimes once you covered a part of the text layer, other part of the text layer will be uncovered like this one. What you can do, you can adjust the other vertices so everything just covered, or you can also add another vertex there by just clicking on the line here and then adjust it accordingly. To be honest, you don't want too many vertices on your mask because it's just gonna be so hard to control. So when you're adding extra vertices, just make sure it's not too many. Now I'm also gonna add another vertex here. And obviously, once I move that vertex, the other part is uncovered and I feel like the stroke is not thick enough. So I'm going to bring it up to 39 and I'm going to adjust the handle and I'm going to do that for the rest of this text. Once you do that, it's not going to be the end of your adjusting. You will still need to adjust once you animate, but let's just start animating and I'll show you what I mean. On your shape layer, open it up. And then go to this add and click on the arrow button and you want to go to trim path. So trim path will animate your path or your mask. Now let's create a keyframe for end at the very beginning of your composition. And let's go to about two seconds and then add another keyframe there. And then let's go back to the first keyframe and change that to zero. So if you play it, it'll just write on but it doesn't apply to your text layer. So what you want to do is to click on your text layer and change this matte setting to alpha matte matte. Because our matte's opacity is set to 70%, we want to bring it up to 100 so that it's full opaque like that. Before we adjust the mask, I'm actually going to add this setting on your matte layer under content, under shape, under stroke, and then I want you to go to taper here. 
So taper will basically kind of make the end of your stroke sharper just so that it looks more like a brush stroke or like a pen stroke. I'll show you what I mean. When I play around with the start length and end length, it becomes sharper at the start there or what you call it taper. Now what I want you to change is actually the end length. So I want the end to be sharper. Now when it writes in, it becomes like that. Now I want to create a keyframe for the end length so that at the end of the writing, it becomes all full again. So I'm going to create keyframe about two seconds there. And then at the very start of your composition, another one. And then let's go to that second keyframe here and then change that to zero. So if I select my matte layer and hit U, it'll show all of my keyframes. So it's writing on like that, which I like. It doesn't look like it's finished because we haven't add a mask for the line for the T. So we're going to do that. Hit J on your keyboard to bring up your pen tool and then just draw on your matte layer and it will appear like that. Now, if we hit U twice, it will show all of our settings that we've been messing around with. The shape tool has the same exact setting as the shape one, but I don't want that. I want it to have its own trim parts. So what I'm going to do here I'm going to click on the shape tool and bring it down below the trim parts one. And then after that, I'm going to duplicate this trim parts one. So click on that and control D to duplicate and bring it down inside the shape tool. Now that trim parts two only applies to shape two. You can also bring this trim parts one inside of the shape one so that it only applies to shape one. Now I'm going to hit U again. Let's have a look at the trim parts two here. And I want it to start animating when the first mask already draws in the T. So maybe about there. So I'm going to bring all of the keyframes to where my playhead is. And because the mask is really tiny, it should be faster. So I'm going to bring the second keyframe all the way there. Just guesstimate how fast it will be. Maybe even faster. And let's see how it looks. I'm actually going to bring that even closer to each other and maybe even bring it earlier now I also want to bring a taper setting to this shape tool so I'm just gonna click on this taper and then I'm gonna open my shape tool stroke select the taper on the shape tool stroke and then I'm gonna go to this keyframe over here by hitting J so that my playhead is there and I'm gonna paste it control V and now you have your keyframes there and obviously I want to bring it all the way down there. It's time to readjust all of the masks because if you see right here, it doesn't look too good. I'm going to change this layer to another color, maybe fuchsia, just because the background is blue. So we can't really see when the mask color is also blue. Now I'm going to select this vertex and just move it to there. Still doesn't look very good. So I'm going to animate the start length. So I'm going to hit J so that we can go to this keyframe. Create a keyframe there and another keyframe over there and go back to the first keyframe. I'm going to set it as zero. I'm going to select the end keyframes of both start length and end length and just move it across so that it kind of still animates the taper even when the text stops animating it. Now I'm going to select all three set of keyframes of the shape tool. Basically, I'm going to move it forward so that it starts after this circle is animated. All right, now let's adjust the main shape. If I just scrubble through my playhead, so the first one is over there. So I don't really like how it looks over there. So I want it to have a smoother animation. So I'll fix it like that. So over there as well, I don't like that sharp bit over there. So I'm gonna create another vertex. Try to move it there so that it covers it. It can't be perfect, but at least if you fix it, it might look a bit better. So I'm actually gonna adjust the vertex to be there again. And then right there, it feels like it's not connecting well. I'm gonna create another keyframe in between here. I'm just gonna drag it away from there. When it animates, it doesn't have like a weird bit going on. The next one is this thing as well. So let's see if I can fix that. So the reason why it pops in is because this line here it goes up and goes down. This line kind of like touches the eye. So I'm going to create a vertex there and move it away so that I can fix it. But obviously you need to fix this part here. I'm going to create another vertex and move it over there. As I scrubble through my playhead, 
I still see like a bit of error there. So I'm going to try to find a way. So I think what we need to do is to move this vertex away from the eye and also this one away from the eye so that it doesn't have that weird bit. So it's still doing that. It might be because we just need to move it even more away from each other. Yeah, now that's fixed. And then there's another one. There's already a vertex there, so I might try to figure out what's happening here. So actually, I'm going to bring it away from there. Now let's have a look at the T and E here. We're very close, everyone. So I don't really like that either. So I'm going to create another vertex and see if I can fix this. This is going to be a bit tricky. Oh, you're going to hear a bell ringing. That's my cat. Hi, Draco. So that kind of not really fixed, but I think we might be able to get away with that as it animates. The one thing that I want to fix is actually this one over here because it doesn't look very good. I'm going to move it down there. So obviously you see that white bit. I think it's coming from this vertex. So I'm going to bring it up to there. And honestly, I don't know how to fix that bit. Maybe I'll create another vertex here and bring it up like that. Yeah, that actually kind of fixed it. Not entirely, obviously. I think I'm quite happy with that. It's not perfect, but it's not bad. So that comes with like practice. And once that takes finish animating, I can see that there's a gap there. So that's probably because I moved that vertex away. So I'm going to move it back over here. Obviously, if you scrubble through your playhead, there will be imperfections everywhere. But as it animates, actually barely notice it. So that's great. Now, once you're happy with that, you want to select the matte layer and the text layer and pre-comp it together. And I'm going to just call it text. What I'm going to do, I'm going to duplicate this twice, control D twice, and I'm going to select the top two. I'm going to hold Alt Shift and then page down to move it 10 frames ahead. And I'm going to just select the first one and then Alt Shift page down to make it move 10 frames ahead. Now, obviously you don't see anything at the moment. That's because I'm going to add a fill effect. So I'm going to select on the second layer and then control space to bring up my FX console and type in fill. And I'm going to use a like a really bright pink color. And then same with this one, control space, fill. And this one, let's see what yellow looks like just because we don't have yellow on our background. And I'm going to leave the top as white. Yeah, so it has kind of like this brush effect. I always do that staggering thing when I do this writing effect. Just It's just like a small thing that makes your writing effect cooler. And after that, I'm going to pre-compose all this free text layer. I'm going to call it text triple or something. And then I'm going to add an effect, which is turbulent displays. So turbulent displays distort your layer. What I do firstly usually is under evolution option and I'm going to put time expression on the random seat. So control click on that stopwatch icon and type in time asterisk. I'm going to do 50 for now and see how fast it is. So that's really fast. I'm going to change that to 10. And then obviously, even though that's slower, it's just still a lot. What you want to do is to decrease the size. I'm going to decrease it to 10. The size of the turbulent is much smaller. And then the amount as well. I'm going to decrease it to 10 as well and see how that looks. It has that kind of like subtle wiggling effect. You can probably bring up the amount a little bit so that it's more obvious. And you can also bring up the time expression a little bit to 20. And to add a bit more drama, I'm going to animate the scale of this text. So create a keyframe in the beginning there and another keyframe at the end. And for the end, I'm going to change the number to 150. So that at the moment is just kind of like zooming in slowly like that, just to give an extra effect. And then the last thing that I want to do, I want to add an effect for motion duck. And the effect that I want to add is under MGSP. And I'm going to add one of this icons here. I think it's under lines and I'm going to add this one. So I'm going to click on that and it'll pop up this pre-composition. As you can see, the animation is super big. So I'm going to reduce it to 20 and I'm going to go inside that pre-com and adjust the colors. I'm just going to make everything white. And then I'm going to bring that to the top of the E there and I want it to animate just close when the white text finish animating. And I'm going to duplicate it, Control D, 
I'm going to bring it here and I'm going to add a fill there. So control space, fill. I'm going to change the color to black. I'm going to bring this forward a little bit. So what you see is this. So that's what I think is a better write on compared to my old tutorial. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.